Okay, so hello to all our audience of Metal Zone Radio Show. We are at the Antipode in Rennes, France, uh, for uh, the show of Anathema, uh, Rendezvous Point, and Masvidal. And we have the huge pleasure to be with Paul from Masvidal. So, Paul, uh, uh, hello. Thanks for taking time to, un to answer some questions. Uh, so, how are things uh, in your life at the moment? Uh, one breath at a time. That's how I'm taking it. Uh, everything's okay right now, and that's how I try to live one moment, one moment at a time. You know, um, it's um, the journey continues. <laughs> sure, let's go on. Yeah. yeah okay. So, so you are playing uh, for this uh, Euro tour with Anathema. How did you get chosen to be one of the opening acts? Uh, Andy Farrow, the manager for Anathema, and he asked me. He he was a, a fan of the the records, the acoustic releases, and just we had been in touch over the years regarding cynic stuff. And he just, I told him I was interested in touring these releases, and he just reached out one day and asked. So it worked out. Yeah, simple as that. <laughs> How many shows did you play for this Euro tour? Total, yeah. I, I believe it's, well, there's 18 with Anathema, and then I'm doing, I think, four headline shows, or a show with Annika yeah. in Holland, and then three or four headline after. It ends in Athens, Greece. Yeah. So very busy at the time. Yeah, yeah, it's a good month, yeah, the yeah. whole run, yeah. Okay. Um, So, for the people who don't know very much uh, uh, the band Masvidal, uh, uh, can you tell us the genesis of uh, of uh, this uh, solo project? Well, it um, basically it's about coming back to origins. You know, this uh, this music was kind of part of my these songwriting is from my childhood, and uh, and when Cynic had an original split with our drummer mm -hmm. in 2015, I really was trying to figure out who I was again without my drummer, who I forged my identity with essentially as a musician and even as a person in, to some degree. So it was about kind of coming home to being a child again and seeing where I was without a drummer and just writing songs. And um, so it was really rooted in just doing something very pure and kind of part of my roots. And... Um, more of a therapeutic thing than anything else. Um, and it turned into, as these things do, it became its own world. <laughs> and uh, I, I first I thought, oh, this will be quick and easy, just record these acoustic songs. But um, they really took on a life of their own. And then at that point, you're just taking instruction, you know, just trying to make it as honest and thorough as possible. Yeah. When did you form the band? Well, it's just me, solo acoustic, so really, um, I guess it's the band's been around, you know, forever. <laughs> but, um, but in terms of this project, I mean, it really, I recorded everything just over about a year and a half ago. And um, in the past couple of years, some, de some are older demos from, from further back, and um, some songs are... Um, So, so material kind of spans a long period of time, but uh, the most of the recordings happen just in the six months prior to the first release. And uh, so, yeah, and I, you know, I wasn't sure what to call it. I had a bunch of different ideas and a friend of mine in London said, you should just use your last name because it sounds like a band and yeah. it's easy. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us more about the, the idea, the concept to release, a, a, this is a trilogy uh, 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 called The Mythical Human Vessel. So can you tell us more about, about this trilogy? Sure. Um, well, again, it's one of those things that it found its own path without me kind of trying to stay out of its way. You know, it was originally, I was just going to put out, I recorded about 20 songs mm -hmm. And then when I started to shape, see what the story, I started to see this story, you know, and I thought, okay, this is breaks up into three parts and there's five songs per part. And then, so it was just this interesting kind of, you know, it's almost like a line that goes like this and then goes back down. And, um, and it kind of, it's just one of those things that without revealing too much, there is a, a beginning, middle and end. And um, and it does kind of do a full circle in a sense, but it took 
some time to kind of see what that shape was. Um, and it, it really, you know, there's the isochronic tones. I mean, really this work, although it is a, a self-release mm-hmm. solo record with, you know, barely any drums, bare bones songwriting, um, the, you know, the whole idea was it as an offering to, to people. Yeah, um, and truly an offering for myself in the end. But I had a guy named Stefan Pigeon. I don't know if you know him. He runs a website called MyNoise.net. And he's like an audio genius from Brussels who um, was a programmer for Roland back in the day. And he programmed these tones in the records called isochronic tones, which are these kind of similar to binaural beats. They're like healing frequencies. And um, it's all based on frequency range and brain waves. So they call it brain entrainment. So it's an interesting, it became this merging of this very organic kind of acoustic process with this very modern experimental you know, kind of a uh, auditory medicinal science of you know sonic yeah. medicine. So, okay. yeah, yeah, it is interesting. It's kind of acoustic meets very kind of modern experimental medicine. You know, um, for people who haven't seen the band live, well, what can we expect live with uh, with the band? Well, this is a almost an abbreviated version of the bigger vision because the idea with this show is eventually a kind of an immersive experience in a dome and you're completely taken on a journey and I might not even be in that show. It's almost like there's a bigger concept here. But in terms of this like a rock club setting, it's very much just me and my guitar and some visuals behind me that are related to the work. Um, I had a, a couple friends do some beautiful art for the backgrounds and stuff and um yeah and it's just kind of trying to create some cohesion there with uh what you're seeing and feeling and hearing you get the tones um it's yeah it's like a a journey inward yeah (laughs) something completely different i read uh i don't know i think it's true but you you will confirm that you produce a children's album for actor jim curry uh yeah uh title our roland's rules uh can you tell us more about about that uh he's an incredible human being and um he definitely walks the talk you know a true spiritual warrior Mm -hmm. and uh it was incredible i spent almost every day with him for a month and uh we just worked you know in studios and out of his house and um and we made a record that was really for him a tribute to his grandson Mm -hmm. he has a daughter and she had a child And this was kind of a way for him to honor his inner child in a way. And But it, what's interesting is it's a concept, it's a story about death. So it's introducing this idea of death to children. In that, So it has this profound depth to it, which makes sense with Jim. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was also kind of a beautiful moment where him and his daughter got to work together after a long time of, I guess, not working together and um, and making music together. And I kind of was there in the middle of it just working between the two of them and it was really really beautiful yeah i mean jim's a huge beatles fan and classic rock so making these songs was so fun you know very cool experience with him um so you 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 are in the in the music industry music business for a long time now uh uh, how much in your opinion has changed over the years in the in the metal rock community and, and business Wow. Well, it's evolved a lot, especially musically. You know, when Cynic was coming up, we had a hard time. Obviously, um, Prague was not, there was Prague bands, but it was very much, people didn't understand what we were doing. And we almost broke up because of that. I mean, we felt so unloved, you know, and although we went against all odds to make that first record, it was really a challenge, you know. And, uh, but I feel like now it's very, especially progressive experimental music, it's very normal now. It's like, yeah. it's kind of become common with the younger yeah. generations and it's really uh, beautiful to see that because it's kind of, there's a lot more, as much as there is a bunch of unoriginality, there's a lot of originality too in so many different, back in the day it was like if you weren't brutal and extreme, no, you know what I mean, you were an outsider. Yeah. And now they're accepting, the, just it's a much more eclectic kind of world and which is nice to see and the business uh you know the business will always be the business right it's um i don't know how much has changed there other than that everything's over email and you know it's business is business business is business yeah 
I, I, I understand, of course. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your biggest influences? Well, I would say nature is a big influence. Um, certain spiritual teachers, you know, I'm, I'm a, a meditator, a, a, a yogi, yeah. a vegan, you know, so I, I try and live a fairly holistic life other than having experimented with psychedelics since I was a teenager mm -hmm. and still find those to be quite interesting, you know, um, But, uh, but I found that you can walk that path without the psychedelics and just access the same states just through meditation. You know, it's all in, it's all here. It's, we have it. Yeah. We're here, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They say that uh, meditation, the goal of it is mm -hmm. to synchronize your mind and your body. You're trying to get them to work together. You know, that's the idea. So it's because um, it's a lot of times most of us are living up here mm -hmm. and disconnected from this. Yeah. But this thing has a lot of intelligence, you know. So, um, but yeah, that's really, and, and, and songs, you know, writing songs and music. And I've recently discovered I like making things with my hands and making art. I started experimenting with resins and making this stuff called organ. And I have these pendants for sale that are part of this sacred geometric stuff that I'm really interested in. Um, you know, extraterrestrials and crop circles and uh, sacred geometry. That's a big Thing for me I'm really fascinated with that whole world yeah <laughs> so um, what was your first show concert you're gonna see the, the, the first one my first concert I want to say it was you two and uh, who was it it was you two and like Van Halen yeah. it was with my brother my older brother and they used to allow kids to go to these shows and it was some huge concert like and you two was like opening they were like an alternative rock band you know they were like original you know, back yeah. in the day political and i guess they still are but yeah. um but it was like van halen you two and who else was it journey journey yeah, yeah. And then I think after that, I started to go to shows like as a teenager with some friends. And I remember seeing Ozzy, like Speak of the Devil tour, Iron Maiden, you know, <laughs> Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Old bands now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But, but still there. Still. I mean, they seemed old to me then because I was just a teenager, you know, a kid. But uh, now, I mean, it's amazing they're still going, which is fascinating. I mean, like Iron Maiden, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, they're really one of the greats now, you know? <laughs> cool. So, yeah, you remember that, that show, the first one? Yeah. Of course. I just remember the sea of people and, you know, just everything feels larger than life at that point. It's just like you're in awe. Mm. And that's when I really began to appreciate when I would start go to local shows, mm. smaller venues, and realize how special it is to see things in intimate spaces because those big shows feel, can feel very impersonal. Yeah. You know, you're just kind of in a mass of, yeah. So, uh, what are your plans after this Euro tour with Anathema? I'm going back to, well, I go back to the States, mm -hmm. to California, where I live, and I'm going to finish a new Cynic record. Yeah. Um, Sean Malone is living in Los Angeles as well, and, uh, and we have a drummer named Matthew Lynch, um, and we plan to finish a record and deliver it basically by... The end of July. I mean, most of the material's written, and it's now just kind of yeah. getting into the yeah, and recording and doing all the details. But um, yeah, finish a scenic record, and then probably come back out and tour more of this work mm -hmm. in the fall. I'm thinking about South America. You know, we'll see. Just more Europe, U.S. states. Yeah. This is the first tour ever for this work. Um, yeah, and then we'll see. But that's kind of I feel like the rest of the year is pretty mapped out. Yeah. That's cool. So let's check the, the social networks about everything about that, about Cynic, about Paul, what he's doing with Masvidal. Uh, so, Paul, to conclude this interview, you have something to, to add and some words for the French people because we are in France. Yeah, I love, I love France. I love, you know, the beautiful country. It reminds me of California, you know, driving through France. It's just the, the, the look of the terrain, you know, especially the mountains and then you have the sea and... Uh, but uh, merci beaucoup for all the support. I appreciate everything. And the French fans are so much passion, you know, with the French. And uh, 
it's uh, we're trying to always access those that state as a musician, you know, a very ecstatic, honest state. And I feel like French audiences are very um, they can they're interested in authenticity, mm. and you can feel that as a performer. the The audiences want you to tell the truth, and I like that. You know, I feel like okay, I can do this with you. We yeah. can do this together. So, um, but yeah, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you to you, Paul, for this interview. This was Paul Nasvidal with the band playing uh, tonight uh, in Rennes at the Antipode with Rendezvous Point and Anathema. Wish you a lot of good things for the band, for you, for your life, etc., etc., and uh, be there tonight. Bye-bye.